In this video, I'm just going to run through my complete setup that I use when I'm light lure fishing or known as LRF, light rock fishing. Really, I just see it as light lure fishing in the um, uh, 3 gram to 15 gram lure range. And um, uh, it's taken a while to sort of figure out exactly what is the full setup I need to kind of put it all in a, in a bag, don't think about it, grab the bag and go and know that uh, whilst not being too heavy, it also contains everything that I need for almost any eventuality in this type of fishing in a really comfortable backpack that also has room left for all the other things you need to take, such as spare clothes, and some food, maybe a flask, maybe some, um, sunglasses, all that kind of stuff. Um, and um, yeah, like I say, it's taken a while to sort of understand exactly what my needs were, and my needs might not be your needs, but uh, nevertheless, I, I think it could be really useful just to uh, to run through this and all the all the various things I take, and also understanding that um, sometimes, occasionally, I do sort of take a more minimalist uh, kit, but, uh, which I sort of decant from this main kit and put into a smaller um, hip bag. But normally, I I can't be bothered. You know, I just the whole point of this setup is that I don't have to think about it. I just grab this bag, I go. And I know that um, any eventuality for light rock fishing, light lure fishing, is going to be covered, that at least that I'll be interested in. So what I'll do is I'll work from uh, right to left, um, uh, give you an overview first of the various pieces that these are, and then once we've done that, uh, I'll sort of show how it packs together, and as I show that, I'll provide a little bit more detail as to what the various bits and pieces are. Right then, like I say, we're going to start from the right here, and we've got my uh, my lure fishing rod, which is a, a major craft light lure fishing rod in the three gram to fifteen gram range. Uh, it's a travel variety, four piece. You'll see more details of this later, and it packs into that nice hard case, which then gets tied to the side of the bag. A delicate thing, so it's a good idea to always go with the rod case. I team it up with a Shimano Stradic 2500 sized FE fixed bull reel loaded with Daiwa J braid in the blue color. I think it's about eight kilos, very thin, very fine. And I tie up fluorocarbon, a six pound breaking strength fluorocarbon leader. And the two pair up really nicely. It's a really nice balanced outfit for general light rock fishing. And then um, I have all my sort of uh, sundry items in terms of um, well, hooks and swivels and beads, um, drop shot rigs, uh, things like that. Um, they all fit into the waterproof, hard waterproof case you see uh, on the right hand side. That case, this one here, is made out, it's made from the company Plano. Completely waterproof, love it. These are all the uh, soft plastic baits that I take. Various makes, various sizes, the uh, sort of the ragworm type variety, the Berkeleys, the Sony's, uh, all the familiar stuff. Um, and all of that together, it uh, fits into this um, packing cube, in this instance made by Eagle, Eagle Creek from a hiking shop. I think I bought that. These are all the jig heads that I would need for those soft plastics. And on the other side of that case, I have carrow weights some other bits and pieces which I'll run through later and then coming to the yellow case I have my, all my metals which is what I mostly fish with on the one side I have the sort of the streamlined metals and on the other side I have the more jig shaped type metals and uh, red box for the jig heads yellow box for the metals makes it really easy to, to uh, choose the box coming now to a collection of smaller items Starting off with a first aid kit, which is really important. It goes without saying, every angler should take one for the benefit of him or herself or others. This was just a standard first aid kit I got from a hiking shop. But I also take um, spare tip rings. Now, if you lose a tip ring on a fishing rod, that can ruin your session. And to replace it, you're going to need a lighter because the lighter is needed to soften the glue, to melt the glue underneath. You can pop one tip ring off 
and use a glue stick here, which I'm pointing out, you'll see better later, to uh, put a new tip ring back on. It's a really simple job. Other items, there's a head torch here. I take some spare batteries for the head torch, a disgorger, braid scissors, a couple of spools of uh, fluorocarbon leader, which I use about a two foot, two and a half foot length of to tie onto the braid on the reel here. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a, a small little Lebanon Micra just as a spare. And all of that fits into this hard, sealed, completely waterproof case by Plano. Again, I uh, love these cases, really robust. Um, love them, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is my Hessian sack that I use to keep the fish fresh. Uh, tea towel, a couple of those to keep my pans clean. Plastic bag underneath there. Uh, that just helps to keep everything uh, waterproof when I go home. Fish grip here, which I really only use for mackerel that I'm going to keep. It stops the scales from getting all over my hands and all over my tackle. If I'm going to throw a mackerel back, then I'll try to shake it off the hook and not touch it at all. Then this piece of bone here, which is just uh, allows me to quickly and humanely dispatch any fish that I'm going to keep. And really useful, find this essential, the Leatherman Charge, which is uh, just a fantastic multi-tool with a multitude of uses. And that's really it. Uh, obviously, there's the bag there, which uh, again, I will go through later. And... Um, I always wear a hat. Uh, it's just comfortable. It also um, eliminates the glare from the sun and uh, helps protect me from sunburn. Okay, so we'll run through here how this setup packs down, starting off with the reel, take the handle off, and we'll see how that goes into the bag later. And we have a pair of sunglasses here, which I forgot to mention previously, but for the series of importance to go. It teams up nicely with the peak of a baseball cap to keep the glare away. And all those other items um, I was mentioning, such as the head torch, etc., they pack into this sealed waterproof case like this. There's the head torch, the lighter. These are the fluorocarbon leaders that I use. Uh, in this instance, I use the brand Seagar. And you'll notice I have two braking strains that I use, a nine pound braking strain and a six pound braking strain, just in case I feel I need to go a little lighter in some instances. There's the small little Leatherman Micra that I take just as a spare, has a pair of scissors, a few other functions, knife, screwdriver, etc. Braid scissors, which are essential if you're using braid because the serrated edge cuts the braid cleanly, quickly and easily. Other scissors, normal scissors, it just doesn't do that, so they're, they're essential. Tape measure for measuring fish, and here are the tip rings I was mentioning earlier, with a small piece of glue stick that I put a screw into, just helps to hold it. And coming to some spare batteries, and a disgorger, which I mainly use when I'm using drop shotting rigs with small barbless hooks, and then that all nicely packs away into that case easy to get to. So here we're looking at all the different sizes of hooks I take for drop shotting and um, yeah I take quite a few varieties but you never really know sometimes go for small fish sometimes a bit larger. Uh, take different uh, different forms of links for linking the lure to the fluorocarbon. I also take some pre-made drop shot rigs that you're seeing here. I also have some sabikis as well, just in case there's a few herring about, for example. And uh, some uh, spare swivels. And that all fits it neatly into this um, waterproof plano case like this. So speeding this up slightly, we have all the different types of soft plastics that I use. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I put those into this um, packing cube. This one is by Eagle Creek, but you can go to any hiking store and get a similar sort of packing cube. They're very useful, keeps everything organized. And all of these soft plastics then team up with the 
jig heads, which I'll show in a moment. And here are those jig heads I was just mentioning that team up with the soft plastics, various sizes, and on the reverse side I have some carrow weights, other soft plastics, um, my drop shot weights. The carrow weights are really useful for fishing with very light soft plastics at various depths, by the way. And coming now to the metals. And um, I think these are major craft jig paras. Um, and uh, the ones I'm pointing at here have had a lot of success with these, the mackerel, and just uh, jigging them right down to really small size, 3 gram, 1.5 gram sizes, which you can actually target sand oil. And um, on the reverse side of this, which you'll see in a moment, we have the more streamlined versions of the same lures. Again, um, probably way more than I need here, and I often just often go to the zebra pattern as well, but they all work, uh, and it's just nice to have a, a selection. You never know, sometimes fish want a certain particular type of colour on certain days, so it's good to have a selection. Well, that's mainly it, and if we remind ourselves about what the full setup looked like, before I started packing it down, it looked like this. And then when it's packed down, like I was just demonstrating, it goes to this. And then all of that, as I'll show in a moment, then fits into the compartmentalized section of the backpack, which I'll show now. Right, so let's pack this away, starting with the reel, speed it up slightly, handle goes into a separate small little pouch there. Then on the left hand side we have all the things I have for the fish, the in sack, the lags, waterproof bag, fish grip, etc. Then we have the first waterproof case, then we have the lures, the first aid kit, the soft plastics and the second waterproof case. And there we have it. And you can see the beauty of a system like this is everything is really accessible, very organised. I don't spend any time scrabbling around looking for stuff, finding stuff. I can make really quick on-the-fly decisions um, uh, in response to any given fishing circumstance, a complete change of tactic, for example. In this top compartment, I put the sunglasses and the Leatherman. I often put the, uh, the metal jig case in that part, part as well, because that's often what I'm using most. And then along the side here, I'll strap the rod. And that's the setup. Uh, really, really comfortable contains everything I need. Like I say, it's my grab and go bag. I don't have to think about it. If I grab this bag, I know I'm going to have pretty much everything I need for the type of light lure fishing that I normally do. Everybody will have their own needs, but it's a, hopefully a useful way of showing how you can configure something to make it as simple and efficient as possible. What I haven't shown in this video though is uh, this bag also in the front compartments has some expandable compartments that allow you to put those essential extras like a few additional items of clothing, um, some water and your lunch or your dinner or some, some food. Which is really important because a lot of camera bags, which is essentially what this is, are great but they don't have that much space for any other stuff that you need. But this is perfect, this Low Pro Whistler 350 um, provides me with all the space I need. So um, I hope you found that useful. I know it was quite a detailed run through, uh, but um, like I say, it's, it's sometimes I find it useful seeing how other people set up and configure their own uh, fishing tackle. And so I hope you've also found that useful. And if you have, please, please leave a comment. And of course, the usual request to like and subscribe. It really helps the YouTube algorithm and helps um, up, uh, helps ensure this content reaches more people. Okay, until the next video, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.